Yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> uh, the direction of this was um, absolutely incredible. The, 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 uh, it was so imaginative. There were um, every scene, in fact, it got a little bit overwhelming because every scene got huge applause from the audience. The sheer sort of stagecraft of every scene <laughs> elicited such a response that it started to get in the way of the narrative for me. I'm not used to people applauding after every scene, but there were things like Macbeth tortured in bed, thinking about the witches, and the bed is upright, and he's like um, writhing around in the bed, upright as if you know he's actually lying down. The incredible physical control of this actor to be able to do that, and then literally like flip his body so it looks like he's sitting on the edge of his bed, upright. Um, it's just like, the, the show was filled with these amazing moments like this. There's a giant ball that that rolled out chasing him as in one of those nightmares where you're being chased by a ball, which apparently is very common. And he uh, he ends up riding on top of it, so it's like Macbeth is stuck on the top of the world, <laughs> and then he can't get down. Um, it was just filled with these totally surprising moments. It actually reminded me of watching the Mabu Mind's Doll's House a little bit, in the sense that you just can't believe that you're gonna go to the next level. Like, you just when you kind of feel like you, you understand what's going on and you have your footing, some incredibly new, um, surprising thing happens, both in terms of the design and the way the actors are interacting. Um, it's this constant um, progression of surprises. So, And again, with these actors, I just, I couldn't believe the way they were able to work together and the physical um, beauty of all of them. There's a moment, um, right before Duncan was killed, um, when he like took this bath and then sort of undressed and began dancing ballet. <laughs> that was one of the most beautiful things I think I've seen. So. And after you saw that, you saw um, uh, the overcoat Yes. at the Sovremini Theater. I saw the overcoat. Uh -huh. I fear that this <clears throat> blog entry is going to be um, full of uh, well, I just can't say enough good things. <laughs> but you see, Russian theater is like that. Russian theater is like that. <laughs> I see that now. I, uh, yeah, I really wish I spoke Russian well enough to move here. And I was like 19 and I could be an actor here. Um, yeah, so this was um, a wonderful actress, and you're going to have to remind me of her name. Marina Neolova. Marina Neolova, who played... Um, the main role in Gogol's The Overcoat. Aka what's his name? Aka Akaki Akakievich. Yeah, Akaki Akakievich. Um, this was, uh, yeah, a somewhat um, kind of experimental take on the uh, on the story. There was not a lot of text. Um, a lot of it was mumbled and almost sung uh, by her, and the physical detail of this performance, and I got to sit in the front row, thank you very much, was um, uh, was just amazing to watch. Like every breath she took, every time she shifted her eyes to the side, you could sort of see her thinking, which is a kind of interesting, amazing quality in an actor, I think. Um, uh, to me, what, this version of The Overcoat, um, obviously one of the greatest stories ever written, um, I, I found it to be just very much about mortality, and um, I, I kind of saw different things in the story than I have um, just reading it. So that was interesting for me. It seemed to be very much about death in a way that was <laughs> kind of difficult and, um, and very powerful, I guess. So that was very interesting to me. And the design of this also was, it was a wonderful composer, Bakshin? Bakshi. Bakshi. Mm -hmm. um, and the music was sort of surrounding us, so there would be sounds coming from behind us, and there was live singing and things behind screens. And I, I don't know if this is true, but there, there would be sounds that I thought were just happening in the theater, and then I realized were part of the score. Um, all sorts of surprising. It was sort of an aural extravaganza, this piece, and um, also a, a really beautiful design by the people from Theater 10, right? The Shadow. Ilya Applebaum. Yeah. Yes, Ilya Applebaum. Um, yeah, one of the most beautiful, simple um, designs I've ever seen. It kept 
it was basically like a screen in the back, but um, what he was able to do with projections and with these windows opening and closing created some amazing effects.